So how small is too small? Tiny house, prepper. Live simple, live free. Hey everybody, I'm Bill. And I'm Elizabeth with Tiny House Prepper. And so the question is, if you're gonna think about living, ti <clears throat> living tiny, <clears throat> <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. if you're gonna think about living tiny, how small is too small? And how big is too big? Yeah. You know, and the idea from this video came from a comment that I got several weeks ago. And I did not save the comment at the time because I didn't know I was going to do a video about it. And, you know, we get so many comments on a daily basis that if I don't grab it right when I see it, soon it's so far down that I can't find it again. So I'm sorry about that. But I can't even remember whether it was a man or woman that made the comment. But I think it was a woman. And she was saying that she was like a borderline hoarder and that she was in the process of cleaning everything out and actually downsizing. And the, the bottom line of what she was saying was that she was really surprised at how much room you do not need to be able to live comfortably. That you can actually live very comfortably in much less room than most people think. Yeah. And so that was just a few days ago for some reason I thought about that comment and that I really started thinking about it and I realized she's absolutely right. Most people just have an inflated idea of the amount of room that you need in order to, to live. And we were that way for years and years absolutely. and years. And we're still working on that. You know, <laughs> so the question is how small is too small? Well, <clears throat> we have a number of friends and there are, you, know, you can find YouTube video uh, channels about people who live in a van, full time in a van, you know, 50 square feet. Wow. Um, I could do that pretty comfortably by myself, but probably not with her. And that's not because she can't do it, but because two people can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, in order for them to do that, they have to be true minimalist. Right. And we are not true minimalist. What What is a true minimalist? It's someone who has two, two sets of clothes, so they have one to wear while they're washing the other. It's someone who has only one dish and bowl and, and set of silverware, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. They can have all their possessions just in one small area. Right. You know. Um, and, you know, I said yeah. we're, we're not minimalist. When we lived in our big house before we moved into our RV tiny house here, we each had, you know, as far as hanging clothes, we each had like six or eight feet where we could hang our clothes. Now we each have about that about that much. And I can't put all hanging in there. I have to put other things in there also. Right. Yep. So, you know, we had to downsize considerably on the amount of clothes that we have. But that's okay. You know, you don't need 40 sets of clothes. You, right. you can make do with five or six, you know. Um, dishes. More than two. Yeah, <laughs> but more than two, right, for us. Well, and also just things like, you know, we still mow a lawn and Bill still likes to have a snowblower and we still, <clears> you know, I, I cook regular meals in my kitchen where it takes pans and and um, I don't want to have just two plates because sometimes I'll need more plates to put something on while I'm fixing it, you know, or if I'm going to have company, right. manage to have right. company. So, um, no, we, we like, we're trying to learn to live with more simplicity all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but we're not minimalists. Yeah. So, what is really necessary to be comfortable in your life? Do you need a 2,500 square foot house? What's really needed? Well, four things basically first of all a comfortable place to stay to sleep okay yeah. a place for your bed now you don't need a big huge you know 600 square foot master bedroom <laughs> suite um, all you need is room for your bed because realistically all you do there is sleep you know and when you're sleeping you don't even know what room you're in you know you're as long as your bed is flat and comfortable that's all you need right. our bedroom is <clears throat> a bedroom that's all that's in it is the bed <laughs> one side is up against, the, the, or the head is up against the wall, one side is up against the wall, the other, the foot only has like a foot, a foot. A foot and a half maybe yeah. be, between the wall and then in the front where we go in is maybe two feet. That's it. It's just the just a room for the bed and the bed barely fits. But we're very comfortable there. Right, yeah. And then you need some kind of bathroom facilities 
And yeah, you know, a uh, composting toilet works, but I'd much rather have a flushing toilet. We have a flushing toilet. We have a sink. We have a, an actual real shower. We don't have to take sponge baths. Yeah, I, I'm kind of glad I don't have to spend years showering while I'm sitting on the toilet. I yeah. just, yeah. I'm grateful. It's a very small little uh, tub, but it has a real shower, and we both can stand in there and get all, yeah, right. it helps. So, yeah. and then you need a kitchen, and, you know, if you're gone for a couple weeks, or even longer, you can make do on a camp stove. I've done it for, you know, you can do very well. But a real kitchen, kitchen is very nice. And we have all of the appliances that we need in the kitchen, including a dishwasher, microwave, oven, stove, refrigerator, sink. It's all there. The only thing that's a little bit of a challenge for us sometimes is the counter space. It's small counter space. But we have a fully appointed kitchen. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I got a frog in my throat today. <laughs> yeah, goodness. <clears throat> and then the last thing of the four things that you really need is a comfortable place to sit, to hang out. You know, I don't know whether this is just showing our age. You know, sometimes when you get older, you know, we're in our 60s now, I don't know whether you get smarter or just more tired. Um, but I've, I've seen so many um, really cute little, basically with the wooden tiny houses that people build or things that they've set up in some kind of a RV that'll move, that go, goes places or whatever where the only place to sit in there is a, a little wooden bench. Yeah, they have and, a bench with storage underneath of it and a couple pillows to lean against. Yeah, and... Um, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that, that... Maybe when I was 20, but... I <laughs> yeah, know. I was going to say, I think that's got to be a reflection of the youth, um, you know, the youngness, because just having somewhere where you can just relax a little bit, rest, where if you need to rest a little bit, you don't have to go crawl in bed or sit on the bed or something like that. You can, you know, I know for us anyway, um, it's been wonderful having chairs that are um, comfortable. Yeah, here in our living room we have two recliners, and I yeah. do that a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I said, I don't know when we turned into my grandparents, but um, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, it's been. We just feel like it's really important that there be some place where you can can do stuff. Um, you know, work on 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 stuff or hello Leo or. Um, you know, sit and relax or talk or whatever if you don't feel good. Anyway, having a comfortable place to sit. Yeah. So, four basic necessities for comfort. A good bed, a bathroom, fully appointed with a shower, a kitchen, and a comfortable place to sit. Yeah. Beyond that, the only other reason to have extra room is so you can accumulate stuff. stuff. You just, the bigger, the more room you have, the more you accumulate. Yeah. Um, nature, now, nature abhors a vacuum. Yeah, now there are, <laughs> there are two other challenges to living tiny that we'll talk about in a minute. But as far as stuff, um, how long ago was it that we moved into Lake Lane House? It was like fif oh, 15 gracious. years ago, something. No. Uh, oh, no. No, it's... no, no, it was in 99. So it was, tw holy man, moly, 20 years ago. Yeah, 20 years ago. I, and, and we designed it. I mean, yeah. We designed our, our dream house. This was our forever home. I built it myself. I drove every nail all by myself. It took me a year to build it. I actually designed it on um, on uh, Paint. paintbrush yeah. on, the, on the, um, yep. the computer. And, and we designed, here's why I'm telling you, we designed in lots and lots of storage. Yeah, because in my mind, good, we'll just have places to put things out of the way so everything stays uncluttered, yeah. you know, and we it was well designed. It had a lot of yeah, wonderful so storage. What happened to all that storage? Yeah, we lived there for 10, 11 years, something like that. It filled. We filled it. We filled it up. Yeah. With stuff. Yeah. With junk. <laughs> It was amazing. I mean, and not just the fact that Bill had his own construction company, so there was all sorts of construction stuff. I can't even say it was because I had my own music studio and I had to have tons of stuff for that because that was in my studio. It was just stuff. <laughs> so after 10, 11 years, we were starting to get into the rental business. We were buying or building rental properties. Yeah. And we acquired a, a house that was a little bit smaller, but we liked it a lot it was near our daughter it had a garage and so we moved into that one and our our big one we rented out right it was actually easier to rent out 
right. than the one we moved into. Right. It was closer yeah. to town and, and yeah. bigger. And so when we moved into that other house, it was a little smaller, like I said, but it was still, it was a 1,200 square foot ranch on a full basement. And the, finished, you know. And the basement was, half of it was finished into a really nice den. The other half was a two-car garage. So the living space was probably 18, 1,900 square feet, three, something like three that. Three bedrooms. Mm -hmm. And when we moved out of our big house that we had custom built, we couldn't fit everything into that 1,800 <laughs> square foot house. No. We ended up, the, the den, we lived there for how many years? Oh, what, in the, uh, the other house? Yeah. Um, eight, 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 eight years, something like that. Yeah. And the whole time we were there, we were never able to use the uh, the den in the basement because it was so full of boxes and stuff that you could barely walk in there. The one thing I was proud of us was that we actually kept the garage clear. Yeah. Until we had to move Bill's folks in. Right. And then it filled up with their stuff right. in the garage. Yeah. But you know, we weren't what I would have considered hoarders. If you walked around our big house, it was neat. It was tidy. It's just that we had so much stuff in the hidden storage places. You know, it, it didn't look like an obvious hoarder house, but and then when we moved into the next house where that was a little smaller, we had all this stuff in the basement. After a while, I got to the point where we didn't even know what was down there. Yeah, yeah. Just stuff! <laughs> <laughs> so then when we finally went through the process to truly downsize to get into this little place that we're living right now, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, we live in a, in a 30 foot RV uh, a travel trailer. It's permanently set on land that we own, so it's not moving anywhere. So that's why we call it our tiny house, even though it's technically it's a travel trailer. 250 square feet. And we fit everything that we needed in here. But it was a real process. Oh. It, it took designing. Yeah. And it <laughs> and it took it took months and months and months of us sorting and throwing and giving away and selling and all of that. And we still ended up when we moved in here with a rental. Uh, storage locker where we put some stuff that we still thought was essential and we didn't want to get rid of so we rented a locker or you know a storage uh, space and put it in there we've now been in this house for going on four years I thought we just passed the four-year part okay M maybe in April and we still have that storage area that we rent and I don't even know what's in there I it's, have some idea but it's just stuff, stuff. <laughs> You don't need stuff, and you don't need space to store stuff. Beyond the four essentials, bedroom, uh, bathroom, kitchen, and a, I keep saying a comfortable place to sit because you don't even need a big living room, just a place for a chair or two. Beyond that, everything else is just place to store more stuff. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Um, now, there are two other challenges that I mentioned earlier. One is that for us, we both work work from home. I, I everything I do is on the computer, editing the videos and all running my Thrive Life business and all of that. It's all all on the computer. So we do have one desk here, but then Elizabeth also basically runs three households and, and pays all the bills for not only ours uh, but for my father. And then I'm getting and, everything settled for my mom. And also moms. she's been doing it for her mother for. A number, okay. a number of years, and now that her mother's gone, she's still working on settling the estate. And and also, so, you know, I edit videos too. I have a separate computer, right. and so I'm working on editing also. So both of us have a lot of office-y yeah. kind of stuff we have to yeah. do she, all the time. She edits all of her T with Jesus videos, and sometimes she does her own uh, other videos that she edits as well. So, mm -hmm. but when we only have one desk, and we're always fighting over it. <laughs> well, it's his, his desk. <laughs> even though, even though we have two, we each have our own computer. We're always fighting over all the, the desk space. So for us, that's that's a, a challenge. It might not be for people who don't work from home. Right. Um, and the other real challenge, and this would be a challenge for anyone, is we don't have place to entertain either to have friends over for dinner or to have you know our son come and his family come for the weekend that sort of thing we d we just don't have room for that that is one of the downsides to to uh, tiny living mm -hmm. yeah and, uh, and there's things you can do creative things that you can do um, but yeah I I wish that um, you know just I, I'm happy that we have this place but I do wish I had something with more width um, just to be able to have a table I could set people around, you know. Um, right. And so, like I said, the, the sunroom is okay part of the time, um, and I can set a table up out there. Uh, we have like a sunroom that, that 
keeps water out, but it doesn't change. And it it's, gets very hot in the summer and very cold in the winter. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's um, it's a little trickier with entertaining. Although you know, grandkids have piled around on the floor in all sorts of places. But as they get bigger and older, it gets a little more tricky. <laughs> you know. But you know, <clears throat> the idea of what is necessary to live comfortably, at least here in the United States, has grown and grown and grown right. over the past decades. You know, when I grew up in the 70s, it was very common to have a large family in a three-bedroom house. And you had all the boys in one bedroom and all the girls in the other bedroom, and sometimes there were two or three or four in one bedroom, you know. Um, and if you go back another couple decades before that, back into the 40s and 50s, it was very common for a house to have two bedrooms, one for the parents and one for all the kids. And they put no matter what the gender, no matter what the sex, all the kids slept in one room. And that was just standard. But now it's almost like you'd have child services showing up at your door if you did that, you know. Um, but nowadays the idea is that each kid's got to have his own bedroom and you got to have a separate den for the kids to go and, you know, get out of your hair and that sort of thing. And the whole idea of what's necessary for a family, especially, has just get, gotten bigger and bigger. Well, and I, I think in a sense there's sort of something lost with people don't just hanging out together as a family right. you know um the kids working on homework at the kitchen table and mom and dad are right there or you're watching something together or you just you're hanging out together you know they just get used to being around each other which i think was kind of neat although i tell you what nowadays with all the electronic stuff if people have you know earbuds you can probably put the whole family back into one living room and they still wouldn't be with each other because everybody's going to be on their own device <laughs> you know, that's just the way it is now. But the idea of how much space we really need has just really been changing a lot. Yeah. You know, um, you know what? What do we? What do we really need beyond the real essentials? You know, um, one thing that we didn't mention earlier that we have been very grateful. It's not absolute necessity, but we've been very grateful to fit into this very small space. And Bill designed it carefully that way. Um, is for one thing the washer and dryer. Um, I I feel like that's a necessity, <laughs> and uh, maybe that's part of being older too. But just knowing I've got a washer and dryer here, and then um, you know um, I have psoriasis, and um, I, we do cook regular meals, and it's I got to admit it's wonderful having a dishwasher. I can't believe how often, hi <laughs> Leo, we've had comments um, on our channel about you know. Why in the world do you guys need a dishwasher? You know, there's only the two of you. And, um, you know, I, yes, when we're out in the cottage, you know, things get hand washed and everything. But with the psoriasis and with how much Bill has to try to help with that, I like having a dishwasher. Yeah. It's so much help. I can just keep putting dishes in as I use them. And we still don't try to use dishes tons. But anyway, I'm just grateful to have it. I think it's, it's really been made a nice addition to our household. Yeah. That, that was a category I had, and I forgot to write. I didn't write it on the list. So, uh, two nice things to have is the dishwasher and the washer and dryer, and we were actually able to fit both of those into our 30 foot, 250 square foot travel trailer. And that's just with planning. That's yeah. with like, designing it carefully. You know, um, another thing I'm actually really grateful. You know, if if you really like, if you, as you're trying to downsize, if you try to really be creative. Um, and, and try to see how you can fit things in. Um, I'm very grateful that with some looking, we were able to actually get a wood stove in this place. Mm -hmm. um, that's been a really wonderful, useful thing for us to have. And um, so, but you know, we found a way to do it. You know, we wouldn't have to though. You know, but it's just been very, very good to have, and it's a good prepper thing too. You know, to to have the wood stove. So, um, I I was just go ahead. Were you going to say something on? I was just remembering something a really smart friend of mine told me one time. I've been so sentimental all of my life about things. And um, you, after a while, you just can't keep carting everything with you. Um, you have to decide what what is the most important and necessary and what do you just love the very most. And this really good friend of mine one time sent me the most beautiful card. And I loved what she said on it. And I called her and I said, wow, thank you. This is so cool. It was a birthday card. And she goes, oh, she says, I'm, I'm glad you liked it. And I said, I loved what you said. And she said, good. She said, now, read it one more time, take a good look at it, and pitch it. <laughs> and there was something kind of really refreshing about that. 
to realize that, you know, I can have memories, I can, you know, I can enjoy something, but I don't have to keep everything. It just piles up through the years. Anyway, I thought that was kind of cool how she said that. So the question is, how small is too small? What do you really need to be able to be comfortable? As long as you got the four main categories, you're going to be fine. And that is a bedroom, a bathroom, a kitchen, and a comfortable place to sit. Unless you're really young, and then maybe you don't even have to have that. Right. <laughs> and everything, everything else is, is just stuff. stuff. <laughs> That's right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, we're working on ourselves, yeah. but live simple. Live free. <laughs> yes. Love you guys. Be blessed. <laughs> bye bye. The four main categories place to sleep, a bathroom, a kitchen, and a comfortable place to sit. Unless you're really young. Right. And everything else is just stuff. Did we do that right? No. Okay. You're su we're supposed to say that. Together. You know, you threw me off because you interrupted what I was saying right there, and it just completely oh, threw me. Right. Sorry. You want to try the whole thing again? Yeah, we'll do the whole quick. thing again. Yeah. And after you say, "Unless you're young," then look at me, and we'll say together, "Everything, everything else, else is just, just stuff." stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay.